Hey guys, this is Abhishek and from this video I am starting a series on Python Pandas tutorial. So probably most of you are already aware about uh, Python Pandas but uh, if you are not aware then Python Pandas are basically a very famous library for doing the data manipulation like uh, importing your data from various sources, merging it, you know manipulating it and putting it in a structure so that you can further do the data science work. So here we will start with a very basic about uh, how you can import your data into the CSV. And uh, in a step-by-step -step, uh, in this series, we will going to cover the more complex topic. So first of all, let's go ahead and talk about how you can import the CSV data into Python and exploring their couple of options when you are loading the data. So first thing is importing the pandas libraries. So import pandas as pd. So what I'm using is basically a Jupyter notebook, which is a part of Anaconda distribution. And uh, by default, this pandas library is coming with this. So if you are using the uh, Anaconda distribution, you will be getting this. And I will highly recommend that you use the Jupyter notebook because it comes with all the default settings, which uh, probably you as a beginner need uh, without going much into the complexity about what are all the libraries you need or don't need. So go for, uh, you know, Anaconda uh, as a search term in Google and you will find the uh, Anaconda distribution for Python and just go ahead and install it and you will find the Jupyter in, as an icon in your start program if you are using Windows. All right, so first thing is importing pandas as pd. So let's go ahead and execute this. And once you execute this, uh, we need to, you know, use the function read underscore CSV. So as you have seen, we have import the pandas as PD. So as PD is basically giving an alias to pandas library so that we don't have to write a long name as pandas. And here in the second statement, we are creating an object nifty, which is a trade C uh, index over here in India, which contains uh, top 50 stocks. And what we are asking is basically to read a file from our desktop location. So pd dot read underscore csv is a function which uh, is a part of the pandas library. And then we are simply giving the path nifty data dot csv. So this file is already on my desktop and I will sh share the link with you in the description for this particular file. And uh, then the next statement over here we are using is nifty dot head. So head is nothing but it shows first initial observation around five or six observations about the entire data set so that you can get an idea about well, what you have loaded and review it whether everything is uh, not everything but at least all the columns have been loaded properly at least. So let's go ahead and execute this. So if we execute this as you can see it's pretty fast even though the file size is small, so it has to be fast. So here we have uh, loaded the data with the help of this command and giving the file name nifty data.csv and then nifty.head and you can see the five observation. So this is the index, the 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4, which, create, which is uh, given by default because we have not specified anything as an index. So a numbering has been given to you and then the date column and the close column which is part of this file that means on this date this was the closing price of this index right next thing is uh, generally a csv file is a comma separated value file as it as it the name stands for comma separated value but you can use the option or a parameter of read underscore csv along with your path name you can use this parameter sep which is nothing but a separator so separator can be comma which is a default choice but if you are looking at your file and you think you see that it's not a comma but a pipe let's say then you can give even pipe or tilt or anything else you know which is separating your values so you can use the sep the separator argument of this function and get your data in a proper format if it is not just the comma. So let's go ahead and execute this. And as you can see, again, the output will be same with the head command. So let's go ahead and uh, see the another parameter, which is n rows. n rows is basically helpful 
let's say you are having a file of uh, you know of a GB or a multiple GBs file like 3 GB 5 GB file and it is taking a lot of time and while loading you know it you make you see that there are some issues with the file so what you can do is you can load some initial observations like 1000 observation or 10,000 observations which will give you an indication whether there is a problem with the file or not. So in that case if you want to limit the number of rows that you are importing into the uh, Python uh, within this object nifty then you can use this and rows parameter. So if I go ahead and execute this and show the entire object. So if you see this time I am not using head like I have used it over here. To show the first five observation I'm used I'm basically trying to show the entire observations so if I go ahead and execute this it will show you all the 20 observation so from 0 to 19 if I show you from 0 to 19 all the 20 observation if you want you can change the end rows to from 20 to 200 to 2000 based on you know uh, the, uh, the experiment that you want to do and the number of rows that you want for that experiment all right let's go ahead and uh, see the next parameter the next parameter is uh, header sometimes your file is not having the any header and in that case you can specify header is equals to none and uh, by default like index the header value will be given as 0, 1, 2, 3, depends on the number of columns that you have. So let's go ahead and uh, and adjust our file a little bit. Um, so for example, we have this nifty data and let's remove this row and let's delete this. All right, we have just removed our headers to create this examples and let's see the file in action all right so let's go ahead and execute this piece and here you can see the file is uh, loaded but the header has been given as 0 and 1 let's see what happens in case of uh, this parameter is not given so if I execute it again by pressing shift enter the name of the first observation have been taken as the where a header of this data set which is not correct that is why it is important that you give header is equals to none and then the observation will come as it is and header values will be 0 and 1 so that's why whenever your data set or the file is not having any header please give this header is equals to none now once you have given the header is equals to none but still you want to give some business friendly name or analysis friendly name for your analysis so that you can better remember the names of the columns you can use the parameter which is names parameter and give the names to first column and second column and so on and so forth for rest of the columns if you have a more columns than these two, two columns so header is equals to none and the names parameter that you should remember in such cases where you need to give the uh, different names or new names all together to the header. So let's go ahead and execute this and see this thing in action. Now you can see that we have a trade and a closing price as per the names that we have given. So names is the parameter that you need to use apart from that you can also uh, store the name of the pair these columns in a different object altogether like this in this case call underscore name and then give the name of the columns like this and using the names parameter you can specify the call underscore name to to basically give the name of the columns so it will give the similar output like this so if i'll just go ahead and uh, use hat and press shift enter so with this uh, the same output is given like there the only changes we have used the call underscore name object to store our name of the columns now the next piece is uh, make the uh, location variable so here so far we have been giving the hard-coded location but again uh, if we want to use like this as an object we have used it for the names we can give the uh, create an object 
of location loc and give it a name over here so that uh, let's say this this particular location is being used uh, at uh, 100 different times in your analysis for example so if you are not doing this not storing the name of the location you will have to go on those hundred statements and change it but here in this case if you are storing it in an object you will just have to change this parameter at one single time and all your hundred statements will be changed because they will be accessing this loc like this right so that's the benefit if you are making your location variable otherwise you will have to go in 100 different steps and change the hard-coded value so if I do that it will again go ahead and execute this without any issue so that's pretty much all I have for you in this video and in the next video I will talk about the Excel data how you can read it and we will explore some options over there